Sharing my fun times, goating with you. <laughs> I just refreshed my haystack with some nice second cut hay at the auction yesterday. See them lighter colored bales on the bottom? That's some first cut. You kind of see the color contrast, how nice and green these are. Look, even Freak likes it better. She's had that first cut bale sitting there from when we watched her kid together. I popped it open so it was a squishier seat. It was quite comfortable like that. Mmm, we like that second cut, don't we, Mama? Fresh bale in the feeder. I love this thing. I've got it screwed to the wall in one place. It's very sturdy. I move it probably about four times a year, depending on what I'm doing. Like they're gonna fight even though they already had hay in there. No, this hay is the freshest. I want the freshest hay. In this video today, my goal is to try and explain to you the methods for milking a goat with teeny tiny teats. Now a big teated goat is a lot easier than these tiny teety mamas. Oh, what a good mama. So this is how she acts when you don't bring her baby out with her. This is what he sounds like while you're bringing him. Things okay now. Got my baby. Alright, now what? As you can see, the buckling is nursing one side down very well for us. Now, look how tiny that teat is. And I wanted to also take the opportunity to show off her little extra teat right there. Look at that little teeny tiny dongling extra nipple. That is entirely useless, but it really doesn't hurt anything. And it is a boar goat quality. I do have boar in my dairy genetics, and I have some dairy in my boar genetics. As always, step one, hot soapy water. Alright, washing with warm water keeps your milk clean and also helps with letdown. Now yesterday I was a little concerned with the minimal output from her unused teat, <coughs> but as it turns out, the baby nurses both sides just a little, so I'm less concerned. Now, with teeny tiny teats like this, you're going to want to kind of put a little bit of upward pressure on that udder. Give it a pinch, and then kind of roll your fingers together, like this. There's no pulling. You don't pull on it. Rather, instead, we're using upward pressure. Now, she's got a nice bowl of udder milk. Wow. I like to try and get as much milk per squeeze as possible. Otherwise, that's a lot of squeezing. You see, kind of keep the upward pressure. It's natural for the dough to have the baby kind of push up a little bit as he's nursing. Now this is literally only the third time this goat has ever been milked. I'd say she's taking it very well. Normally I would be milking into a mason jar that I just set down, but I don't want her to kick my milk. Can't trust her yet. She might go nuts. As you can see, the milk actually comes out quite well. We're only using well, a very minimal amount of pressure. She has a very soft udder. Very easy squeezes. Now, the longer you milk her for, the more likely they are to want to pull away. As in with nature, she would be saying, hey baby goat, You've got a full belly. Have a snack in another 10 minutes. Now 
You just want to keep that upward pressure. And with these squeezes, I'm literally trapping the milk into her teeth and then squeezing it just out of her little tiny teeth. But the more you milk her, the higher up on the teeth you can grab. You want to massage her down real good. Now as I get to the end of her milking, I'm kind of trying to stimulate one last little bit of letdown. I'm grabbing up higher and just kind of rolling the milk down. Now it's like a gentle downward motion. Kind of just rubbing my fingers from the side of her udder downwards. So this teat is even smaller. This is the side he's been nursing on. But you can kind of grab more of the meat of her udder up here. And strip that down like that. I knew an old farmer that always milked like this. Stripping the teat. Now either first you want to get your hands a little wet. My hands are already a little moist from the milk get it on my fingers a little now it's always best to try and milk them as empty as you can to prevent any mastitis and also to increase their overall milk production the more milk you can squeeze out of her today the more milk she'll make for you tomorrow now I'm going to call that good. So this is how much milk I was able to get today. What do you guys think I should do with it? Have it on my cereal? Or make soap? Say hi, Georgia Brown. <laughs> this is my buckling. His name is Blizzard. And he is pulled. Now... Ways to tell if your baby goat is pulled. You see that swirl on the top of his head? Boy, that sure does look like a swirl of a pulled goat. Likewise, when you rub around here, there isn't a nub in the world. Little pool ball head. Comparatively, a baby goat that will have horns, you'll be able to feel its nub already. Each horn nub by three days. At birth, you should be able to feel the horn nubs. And rather than one center swirl, you will have two swirls where each horn will be. So this is my rabbit area have a few bunnies. Today I wanted to show you a surprise. This mama doe has babies. They're so hard to reach. Look at this. Can you see them in there? No, hold on. Isn't that just precious? Got the nest covered back up. Look at this box I provided her to build a nest in. She decided not to use it. Look at them. I can see them wiggling in there. <laughs> 